all in Bitgen and Unifile, file, and the same of your qualification video, main features of newspaper style and methods of translation, and your scientific advisor is Dr. of Philosophy, Habibu Adivan. Good afternoon, dear uh, teachers, professors, and students. Uh, today I'm going to present my uh, research work on topic, uh, main features of newspaper style and uh, methods of translation. So, uh, definition of newspaper style, the <coughs> newspaper style, the main goal of the newspaper style is, uh, is to inform the reader on the uh, Socially important affairs. Uh, newspaper um, materials deal with a lot of uh, facts and events, um, but their subject matter is restricted uh, by some criteria, uh, um, social social um, importance of the um, information, public uh, interest in its uh, ethic and aesthetic norms. Uh, adopted in the, some uh, society as uh, uh, as to the set of uh, problems that can be dis uh, discussed in press. The style uh, of writing for newspaper, collectively called uh, journalist, journalist, is uh, a system of interested uh, lexical, uh, phraseological, and grammatical methods uh, commonly used for the purpose of information and influencing uh, readings in, manner, in a manner that is um, sharp, uh, succinct, and, and uh, easy to read. Mm. Articles are uh, characterized, uh, characterized by the uh, benefit, benefit of expression and careful paraphrasing. They uh, usually consist of uh, um, Coherence in the sentences which cannot, uh, which cannot be omitted without damaging the logical structure and sense of the whole uh, paragraph. Um, translation of headlines. The main function of English headlines is, uh, is to inform the reader briefly uh, of uh, what the news and what the news that uh, following is about. They usually uh, written in an essential uh, way in order uh, to arouse the reader's curiosity. This uh, sublanguage uh, is characterized by a number of uh, peculiarities which uh, do not fall fully considered in English and other languages. Um, <laughs> Problems of um, specific newspaper uh, journalistic style uh, translations. There, um, there can be several problems. Structure of the language, cultural um, dif differences, uh, compound words, etc. Uh, the main uh, challenge, uh, I think, that um, for translated journalists uh, is to translate the text while uh, respecting the additional. Uh, constraint, uh, constraints of the media, as well as remain, remaining faithful to the style of the author. So, uh, to successfully translate newspapers, uh, newspaper journalistic style translations uh, must be well versed uh, in the convention of both the source and target language as well as the subject matter and cultural uh, context of the articles, they uh, must strip that maintain the appropriate um, registered tone uh, and style while adopting the text um, to suit the target audience. That's all. 
everyone. Uh -huh. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have some questions about your research work. Uh, the most interesting thing in your research work is translation of headlines. Yeah, headlines of the sub headlines of the article words texts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between translating headlines and the translation of the content of the journalistic text? Um, when you translate uh, headlines, and you should uh, give your attention to uh, attract the audience uh, with oh, okay. sensational uh, Name, uh, the topic. Okay, my next question, what kind of methodology of newspaper journalistic style uh, translation? What kind of methodology did you use or analyze in your report? What kind of methods uh, can you suggest or give an example? Is uh, what can you say about the novelty of your design work? What is it? What kind of novelty is there? Mm -hmm. Novelty of the work and determine by studying the features of the translation and um, features of the newspaper staff um, about message um, um, to gain the um, what kind of message do you to give in the future? Destructive message, uh, analytic review, and uh, analysis of science, li uh, literature, uh, com comparative message. I have just one question again. Okay? Uh, Number five. I'm going to ask about the actuality of your work. What do you think that this topic is actual nowadays, and uh, why did you choose this one? Have you just looked through? You are talking about translation method or translating of headlines of newspapers and magazines, yeah? And did you just uh, focus on the mentality or native? Uh, Peculiarities of Karkalpa or Russian uh, journalistic texts. Russian and English ones, uh, because there are no uh, actual ones, uh, I think. And then, <coughs> you know that. Uh, most of people nowadays speak in English, so uh, for our uh, population, I think that uh, information from abroad uh, could be interesting. So, uh, <coughs> I choose this topic in that way. So, all I'm asking with about the logo and the same is the function of English as verbal complement with the suffix lead. And your scientific uh, advisor is Dr. of Philosophy, Dotson, which is in the plan. Good afternoon, everyone. Everyone, good afternoon, dear teachers and professors. Uh, today, I'm um, today I'm going to present my uh, thesis named "The Function of English: A Verbal Complement with the Suffix ly." 
first of all, first of all, we need to know what they, what are adverbs. Adverbs are a single word modification modifiers. This means that they describe something. They describe uh, verbs most of the time. Uh, sometimes they describe adjectives and other adverbs. Uh, most adverbs describe an action verb, for example, run. Uh, run fast, run slow, run backward, fast, slow, there are adjectives, uh, there are adverbs that descri describe the action. And also some words just describe adjectives. Uh, for example, pretty. Not pretty, quite pretty, really pretty. Not and quite and really, they are adverbs that des describes the adjectives. And also describes other adverbs. Uh, very coldly, never coldly, and always coldly, very, never, they are also adverbs. Uh, types of adverbs, types, one type of adverbs is adverb of time. Adverbs of time tell when or how often the action occurs. Uh, for example, I never saw the movie. When I when did I see it? Never. Uh, also, another type of adverb adverb is an adverb of place. Adverb of place tell where an action occurred. Uh, for example, did you put your book there there on the table? There is the adverb is there. But on the table is a uh, prepositional phrase. Um, the most common type of adverbs are adverbs of manner. Adverbs of manner tell how and in what manner the action and action has occurred. For example, uh, we walk slowly down the hall. Uh, there is a adverb is slowly. There is uh, describes the verb. Types of adverbs. Adverbs of degree are the hardest type of adverb to locate in a sentence. Adverbs of manner tell how much or to what degree uh, something occurs. Uh, adverbs of manner are often the ones that describe adjectives and other adverbs. For example, I'm very tired. To what degree uh, am I tired? Very. Uh, the final type of adverbs are adverbs of affirmation and Negation. Uh, there are three adverbs of affirmation. Uh, yes, indeed, and undoubtedly. And also there are three negation. Uh, not, no, and never. Uh, anytime these words appear in the sentence, they are always um, would be adverb. Uh, the types of adverbs, they are also adjunct, disjunct, and conjunct. Adjunct is a uh, Constitute of the sentence. John, for example, John is here. Here it's adverb. Also, this chant associated with the full sentence. Uh, frankly, only few of the boys are up to the normal standards. Uh, this adverb is a this chant uh, adverb is a frankly. Also, conjunct. Join the following sentence with a what uh, precedes. The rooms were crowded. Nobody, however, seemed to complain. There is however. Uh, there are also adjunct adverbs. Give uh, adjunct, adjunct adverbs gives extra information about time, place, duration, manner, uh, and reason. For example, I have been studying English for three years. There is for three years as adjunct adverbs. This adjunct adverbs is conveyed the speaker's attitude towards the content of the sentence. Uh, frankly, honestly, for example, frankly or honestly, of course, I'm quite to that. Conjunct and verbals is link, close, or sentence together. I was really uh, late last night, however, I managed to catch the train on, the, on time. Conjunction and conjunct. Uh, the difference. If you conjunct, for example, so yet resemble coordinators both in being cognitive Cognitives and the order of the following two clauses. Uh, with the conjunct so in the second clause is fixed. For example, we paid him. For example, we paid him a very large sum, so he left quite happy. Also, we paid him a very large sum, and so he left so uh, happy. And so it's the uh, conjunct. Mm. Characteristics of the adverb. Morphologically, 
the majority of adverbs have the diversional suffix ly. There are two types of syntactic functions that characterize verb adverbal and adverbal phrase. Adverbal is an adverb may function as adverbal, as clause element structure, a uh, constituent distinct from subject, verb, object, and complement. Uh, he quite forgot about it, for example. And the modifier and uh, adjective for an adverb, for example, they are quite happy. Uh, also, they are quite happily married. Uh, morphologically, three types of adverbs are distinguished simple, compound, and Derivational. Uh, simple denote deno position and direction. For example, just, only, well, back, near, down, up, um, and out, under, and so on. And compound. Um, for example, somewhat, somewhat, somehow, therefore, uh, somewhere. Uh, derivational, they are uh, by adding ly to adjective, for example, interesting, interestingly. Uh, also, by other der uh, derivational suffix, wise, clockwise, ward, nosewards, fashion, uh, schoolboy fashion, waist, straight boy style, style compound style. Okay. Go my question to you is the first one will be about adverbs, as you were talking about the characteristics of the adverb. Mostly, it's about we, yes, it's obviously. Do we have the equivalent of we in our Karpopov or Russian language? Do we have some kind of subject we in adverbs? <laughs> In our Kharkova word is Russian. We have what kind of topic? No, 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 we don't have. Because we sure, yes, when we answer the question, for example, uh, there is a question how, but in the Russian, there is no LY suffix. I'm not asking exactly LY suffix. I'm asking about the suffix equivalent in other languages. Equivalent to prepositional phrases containing noun phrases in four. Как вы уже знаете, сказала быстро, да? Быстро сделала медленно или же в основном suffix of. Вот на русском языке, а в казахском языке не имеется, да? Okay, next question is semantic classification of adverbs. What kind of semantic classification do we investigate? Classification. Uh, there are uh, another type of verb of time, adverbs of time, adverbs of place. Okay, the last point is about syntactic functions. Yeah, you are talking in your work, you are talking about syntactic. Syntactic functions of adverbs. What are they? Uh, they are that modified from another from adjective, maybe from verb modified. For example, uh, an adjective modifies a noun. Uh, an adverb modifies verb, adjective, and other. Adverbs. 
So let's do it. Would you mind what's the plan? And the same of your qualification paper, interrelations of course and community. As the semantic difference of teaching foreign languages. And your scientific advisor is uh, Dr. of Philosophy, Dr. Yolash Narva Yolash. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about
cooperating professionalism and awareness and so of high need students dominance is defined as the teacher's ability to give clear purpose and uh, view that concerning students' behavior and the uh, academics. And so, preventive techniques is preventive approaches uh, to classroom management involve in creating a positive classroom community with natural, uh, natural respect between teachers and students. And so, teachers uh, uh, unconditionally not based on the student uh, behavior. And so, uh, that can be can behavior management ideas as a gate for your classroom. And the first one, create a class uh, identity, and the second one, build a relationship, and the third one, uh, collaborate with class rules, and the uh, first routines and rewards. And so quick, uh, quick corrections, and then public praise uh, become firm and constant. So that's all. That's all I did. Your research paper stuff is to actual number base because it's just directed to the learners and I believe that it's still helpful. Of course, in the future, we don't know, most of you will be maybe teachers also, yeah, teachers, and these are different in your research work will be helpful. Yes? Okay, thank you. Now, next, uh, my question to you is uh, do you use just suggestions? Do you analyze just suggestions in your research work or do you use some kind of techniques or methods also? Also, I can. Um, research my uh, method. My method, for example. Have you designed your personal method? Thank you. 
Authentic materials as a means of forming students' critical thinking and pure scientific advisory, Doctor of Philosophy, Dalcent Ujeshwa Zinim Nikolai. Thank you. So, good afternoon, uh, respected members of the committee and dear groupmates. Uh, and now your attention is over on the thesis to the presentation, which is called Authentic Materials as a Means of Forming Students' Critical Thinking. Uh, the aim and purpose of the aim and purpose of this qualification work is theoretically substantiate and practically check the effectiveness of use of uh, authentic materials in um, forming critical thinking in the classroom. So to achieve the objectives, to achieve the objective of this research work, there is a set of tasks. And the first one is to reveal and assess the concept of critical thinking. The second one is to consider the stages of uh, formation of critical thinking. And the third one is to describe authentic materials uh, that contribute to the formation of critical thinking. And the last thing, the first one is to present the experience of using critical thinking. Um, so, uh, in, in our qualification work, uh, the theoretical calculations of domestic and foreign scientists as William Perry, uh, Krzyzewska, Baronina, uh, and Solabiova Gephardt uh, were theoretically analyzed. Uh, in the next, ah, to gain the mentioned aim and purposes, uh, they use the following methods. The first one is analytic scientists uh, analyzing scientific literature. Then uh, analyzing scientific uh, professional activities of teachers. And the last one is system analysis of authentic materials for the formation of critical thinking of these students. Uh, next slide is about the critical thinking. Critical thinking, the capacity to evaluate uh, skillfully and fairly the quality of evidence and detect error, hypocrisy, uh, manipulation, and bias. So, uh, in the next slide, uh, you're going to see the sense of the concept of critical thinking. The first one is the state and explanation your goals and purposes. Next one is raise viral questions and propose within it, formulating, uh, formulating them clearly and precisely. Uh, so the third one is gather and assess information using ideas to interpret the critical thinking. Uh, and the last one is come to well reasoned co uh, conclusions and solutions, testing the relevant criteria standards. Uh, so, in this slide, you're going to see the uh, classification, classification of authentic materials uh, by Gapwords, and these are based on uh, audiovisual materials. There are uh, television shows, cartoons, uh, clips. And etc. Next one is audio materials. Uh, they are songs, uh, podcasts, and also uh, radio. And next one is visual, visual materials. They are pictures, photos, uh, illustrations, and then signs, tickets. So the last one is printed materials. They are articles. Um, Songs, programs, clubs, reference books for tourists also. Uh, during, the, during the work, we also find out a list of advantages and... So, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, in your research work, you also focus on critical thinking. 
yeah, rather than also the material. And uh, what is the difference between critical thinking and modular thinking? What is the difference between critical thinking and just about thinking? Okay. Uh, there are a lot of considerations about the critical thinking. Critical thinking, uh, for example, uh, Krzyzewska uh, considers that critical thinking is uh, unique questions that maybe do not have answers. Uh, it means that do not have clear answers. But simple, uh, think, uh, simple thinkings, uh, they are uh, have has truth, correct answer, or false answer. Mm -hmm. Next one, uh, your topic is about authentic materials as a means of forming students' critical thinking. You uh, the title of that. And this means that just learning authentic materials can help the students to improve their critical thinking. Or other in methods uh, that should be used according uh, just together or uh, together with the authentic materials. Of course. Uh Actually, uh, authentic materials are used in this kind of uh, method, like audiolingual method, mostly used in audiolingual method. And also, we can use different methods, like uh, direct method. There are different. Uh, but I think that there are uh, lots of disadvantages of using authentic materials in learning. Uh, no, informing critical thinking in the classroom. Uh, for example, the complexity and difficulty. Uh, it means that some uh, of the uh, materials can be challenging to the students, to the language learners, for with the lower proficiency level. Uh, and also, time and resource intensity. It means that uh, teachers So um, our next graduate, Alan Birgen Mokumida, and the same of her qualification paper, feature films oral speech specifically and the ways of its transmission into the native language, and her scientific advisor, uh, Dr. Philosophy, Mokumida, and National Society. So, good afternoon to everyone. Today's my uh, paper is on the theme of the future of human oral specificity and the ways of transmission in, into, into native uh, language. So, let's start. The aim of my paper is to explore the peculiarities of the translation, of the translation the uh, uh, oral speech from English into Russian. And uh, uh, translators should translators must try to uh, convey the cross-cultural uh, aspects and try to uh, give the whole picture of the films. And uh, uh, but uh, there were some difficulty. There are some difficulties to do that. So let's uh, look at uh, this moment. So the relevance of this research, uh, as you know, that films have entered to our life, and uh, uh, now they are considered as a separate as a separate art or form. And there are several kinds of genres of the films, such as horror films, dramas, um, action films, and uh, so on. And as you know, that uh, all of these genres uh, require their own. Uh, characteristics, their own uh, rules of translation, and uh, uh, for example, uh, if we take for example a, uh, action uh, uh, action movies as a genre, uh, this kind of movie requires more requires more military, military vocabulary, and uh, such kind of situation is similar to other genres also. Uh, so. 
to other genders also. So uh, besides of this, there are several aspects such as cross-cultural moments uh, and of course the time when the when this film was demonstrated on TV and the age limits. So translators they mentioned before should notice these moments and they should try to give the whole atmosphere and the whole picture of these films. <laughs> So, uh, let's talk about the theory of speech acts in modern linguistics. As you know, the, the theory of speech acts uh, recently have played the uh, important role in the translation, in the translation theory, and uh, the theory of speech acts uh, uh, learn and study the uh, structure of the content and the result of the translated text. So, uh, uh, let's talk about the equivalence, let's turn to the equivalence of the translating uh, text of the, of the oral speech. Uh, what is the equivalence itself uh, and how we can uh, establish it? Uh, the American science, uh, science, scientist Yu Yang, Yes, uh, this person suggests that uh, we can establish the equivalence of the uh, translated text by comparing the text from the source language and the translated text. Uh, that means that one person uh, should listen to the text of the oral source of oral source of language and the translated text, and if the uh, feelings and the, uh, are the same with the translated in the oral uh, speech that the translated task should uh, be uh, recognized as uh, equivalent to the uh, source uh, text. Uh, so uh, the next part of uh, my paper uh, of my paper is a practical part. Uh, I uh, chose the film Man in Black and uh, let's analyze the dialogues of this uh, uh, of this uh, film. So, uh, I uh, chosen some kind of uh, dialects. The first dialect is... Um, okay, the first dialect was uh, when the two men talk with each other and so one said, uh, and one said, uh, what's up, how are you? Uh, this is the original text of this film, and the translators can translate this text as uh, what's new, how are you? So, uh, this is a translation by word by word, but uh, you, uh, you, but you don't lose the uh, meaning of this uh, question. And the next is uh, freeze means stop. This is the original text, and you can uh, translate this as a stand means don't run. So uh, the character said this piece of this piece of his speech to show that this is the order and uh, uh, this is the order and the the, uh, the character said it to the person and show that a uh, uh, person should stand and don't run. So this is the end of my speech. Thank you for your attention. Okay, then, uh -huh. in your research paper, you also analyze the films and oral speech in all films. Yes, uh -huh. and you mentioned about Man in Black, the movie Man in Black. Yes. Uh -huh. And what kind of analysis or what kind of problems did you face during, that, during the analysis of this film? So, uh, not only in this film, but I can say that when you want to uh, translate the one film to the another language, you always uh, have the problems such as uh, national cultural aspects. For example, uh, they, uh, in America, they have some kind of tradition that we don't have in our country, and uh, when you translate it, you should take it in account. Also, uh, the problem was uh, the dialect that exists in data language, but we don't have any kind of equivalence in Russian. So that was a problem. And also, the one difficulty was the time when this film was demonstrated on television, because the film is quite old, and the uh, slangs uh, were also different, different with uh, our today's language.
Um, my name is Akumai Veligera, and my topic of my graduate school application paper is the importance of learning materials for English classes. Um, the aim of my bachelor qualification paper is to identify the role of teaching and learning materials in English classes. The work consists of an introduction, two main parts, conclusion, and the list of used literature. In the first chapter of our work, we learn with scholars' opinions about the learning materials and we define the principles and procedures uh, of the designs. So, materials include textbooks, video, and audio tapes, um, computer software, and visual aids. Um, so, all right, abuse that materials should teach students to learn that they should be resource books for ideas and activities for instruction and learning and that uh, they should give teachers rationals for what they do. Uh, Scoster and Anderson suggested that designing and developing interactive materials with recent technologies and organizing some of principles. Tom Winston listed as a follows, materials should contain enough spoken and writing text. Uh, the second one, materials should include also the language. Uh, then language input in materials should be contextualized. Then um, should input interesting and engaging tasks. Should provide learners to produce the desired outcomes. Um, so then materials development for teaching English as foreign language has been witnessing significant change during the last five years in Uzbekistan. Uh, today, a number of course books and methodological handbooks have been designed for schools, academic lyceum, um, and higher educational establishment. Among them, we can point to following books such as Kids English Part 1 and 2, uh, Fly High for School Learners, uh, English Matters for School Learners, uh, The Destination Beyond for Academic Lyceum, uh, Learner Scale Up for Higher Education Students, and others. So, um, teachers believe that the textbook is a major instrument in terms of content language input methods and also for evaluation. Uh, then, uh, what they fail to recognize is that the text or materials are major inputs for exposing children to natural, authentic language or context. Um, Teachers who want to teach grammar rules and tell about the author or poets, uh, it seems, are wanting to talk about or teach about the content by explaining and describing uh, or supplying additional information about the author or about the poet. Uh, this needs to be studied in depth with getting in classroom process, activities and strategies to help in promoting peer learning and working with language like pair work, like group work, uh, and reading with understanding are not of much importance for teachers who believe in and want to teach everything. So, in conclusion, I would say that English textbooks should have correct um, nature, recent, and standard English. Since students' vocabulary is limited, the vocabulary in textbooks should be controlled, or textbooks should provide information to help students understand vocabulary that they may not be familiar with many textbooks, with narratives and essays. Uh, it will be useful to have a variety of literature form, for example, newspaper articles, poetry, or letters, so that students can learn to uh, deal with different forms. So that's all of my research work. Yeah, in your research work, you have mentioned about the uh, importance of learning materials. Yeah? Yes. What kind of, what kind of learning materials can be analyzed? Um, in my research work, we uh, I used the decree of President of Republic of Uzbekistan Reserve on mission to further the development of the system of higher education adopted on April 20 in 2017. Yeah, I'm asking about the genres of learning materials. I'm sorry. Genres or types of learning materials. What kind of what types of learning materials do you have you analyzed? Mm, for learning materials for English classes, we use um, in several different ways. Uh, first one is omission, um, addition, reduction, or extension. Um, 
about the waste, I think we use the more creative uh, exercises. What is learning material? Learning material for um, um, Your topic is about the No, material. it's a uh, textbooks or computer software for learning English classes. Okay. The next question will be about about evaluation because you mentioned it in your work and you said you mentioned about the methods of material evaluation. How do you evaluate the materials? The chosen materials. Okay. Next interesting moment in your work, you talk about you written about Karpapa teacher's attitude to learning material. What kind of attitudes uh, do you mean here? Teachers' attitude to learning materials. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What is it? So, uh, towards learning materials and material development, I mean, as a national level in Karnal, Pakistan, uh, teachers need and want to participate in the development of materials. Uh, the dilemmas of teachers and their implications for classroom transaction and discussion for the experience of local teachers. Uh, the task we put forward before us to find answer. Uh, the following questions uh, maybe should learners, learners in Uzbekistan need a textbook at the national level? Okay, just I wanted to listen about the Karakam Park teachers' attitude and what is the difference between native speakers' teachers' attitude to learning materials. Are there any differences? Um, okay. Why don't you just give a specification on Karakam Park teachers? Because they need to have some kind of difference, yeah? Or similarities, maybe. Which one did you analyze? Similarities or differences? Similarities, I think. Uh, in my opinion, it will not have a big difference, differences between. In my opinion, it does not have a big difference between. Uh, 
uh, language in education and larger of so social integration. So citizens of the country are learning English as a common language at schools, libraries, colleges, and universities. Also, a uh, special project problem needed uh, to be investigated in the knowledge of teaching uh, foreign language, especially about, especially uh, in our country. So our work consists of two major parts: theoretical part and the practical part. Uh, in the theoretical part of our work, we deal with uh, the general discussion about the development of the and the uh, increasing of the language. So, for Hungary, teaching is one of the most important language components of any language class. Uh, so, the main reason of uh, the fact that in medium which carries meaning the learning understand and express meaning is what comes in learning languages. So, uh, we can rightly say, uh, says without grammar, grammar it can be convenient, but without vocabulary, it cannot, uh, it can be convenient. Therefore, the study of vocabulary is at the uh, center while learning a new language. So, uh, the kind of activities that work well are games and songs with actions, total physical response activities, tasks, tasks that involve uh, coloring, cutting, and sticking, uh, simple narrative uh, stories, and simple narrative speaking activities. So, uh, the next part, the second part of our work, we deal with methods and techniques of teaching the community now. Uh, teaching to young learners. In the practical part, we present sample lesson plans that involve aspects of and the methods described in the first part. So, um, in the teaching uh, learning process, in the English teacher must know the kinds of language learning resources for young learners, as well as learning resources are not additional materials. For pleasure, but the main uh, materials which are ordered and learned uh, as interesting activities which children will do in their real lives. So, uh, in the work, we suggested that we do some techniques we are uh, concerned effectively in working with young learners. They are mind and guess, vocabulary games, uh, hiding key, hidden picture, parts of body, rhymes, chants, and uh, songs. So the activities we want to point at the practical and functional functional usage of this. This lesson can be uh, used as some supplementary materials that are introduced to basic topics like numbers, uh, body parts, instructions, game, grammar parts, etc. So uh, the, there, there are given uh, some message for teachers. In the conclusion part of the work, the bibliography includes books, manuals, articles, internet sites, uh, we refer to and to the information. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Is it okay if I ask a question? Mm -hmm. What do you understand by innovative technology? Um, innovative technology nowadays, uh, we have uh, a lot of um, technologies like um, 